welcome you here from First Christian Church, Irving, Texas. It is a beautiful, if warm, day out there. Uh, summer has arrived already, a little early <laughs> for us. It is good uh, for those of you here in the sanctuary for us to be together, as well as those of you who are joining us online. We are together from many places this day as we unite our hearts in worshiping the Lord. Today is the fifth of the seven weeks of the Easter season. We continue celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, the, the recognition of him as God's long-promised Christ, as we explore scriptures that invite us into a closer intimacy with God, strengthening our faith and our discipleship. This week, we'll hear a psalm which calls all of creation to praise God, from the highest heavens to the deepest seas, from mountains, trees, animals, and birds, to kings and rulers, and well, every person, old and young, calling all to partner with creation as servants one to another. And in our gospel reading, Jesus challenges his disciples those around that Last Supper table and us today to continue his work, always loving and serving one another. We have an opportunity today to add to this season's resurrection resolutions, one resolving to love, to love as Jesus has loved us. Let's begin this effort by offering our praise in celebration that indeed Christ is risen as we sing together our call to worship and open ourselves to glorify and worship the ever-creating God of all as Linda offers our opening prayer. So will you please stand together? of worship and do not let us go until we have been blessed by a vision of love infinitely generous gentle and forgiving simple wholesome mysterious profound in which all are accepted and no one rejected love that never ends loving God live in our hearts now and forever we pray in the name of the risen Christ amen, amen. Please remain standing as we join in our uh, praise hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
May the peace of Christ be with you here and those of you joining us online. I was still waiting for four more verses. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm supposed to give you a hug from the lady. joy it is a good time for us to celebrate the birthdays that we have this month i know that there are several here with us who have or will be celebrating birthdays in this month and we wish each and every one of you a happy birthday uh, there are those folks who are special in our lives who have or will be celebrating a birthday our son was among those the child born on Friday the 13th, <laughs> uh, got to celebrate his birthday on Friday the 13th. He said, and my favorite thing, to work on a full moon night. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> but we celebrate those gifts of life and new life and renewing life always as we think about those people that we know and the many but we don't know who are celebrating another year that the Lord is opening for us all as we sing together our happy birthday. special blessing, your special birthday blessings on each and every one who has or is celebrating a birthday this month. Those we know and those whose names we don't know, but you do. May each experience that special touch that you provide in their lives, giving them a bounty of love and hope as you walk day by day with them. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. We also, this month, seem to be celebrating a, a plethora of anniversaries, and one of those is today, that Walter and Christy have an anniversary today, and they are together in heart and spirit and if not and on Facebook, even <laughs> if not physically present. But Walter, we have something for y'all. Yeah. 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 
All right. <laughs> Number 29 is great. Let me tell you, that is wonderful. We wish y'all a wonderful, happy, and to all others here uh, for this month. We enjoy these celebrations. These are joys that we bring into our time of prayer. Uh, we know that there are many who are uh, getting ready for weddings. Uh, it is that season, and we pray for each of them. We know that there are a lot of folks who are getting ready from graduate for graduations, or have graduated or are graduating this month, and we celebrate with each of them. And if you have a graduate in your family, please send me a text or an email and let me know so we can send that out in tomorrow's caller update. That would be great. We want to celebrate with you. These are great um, uh, achievements for each and every one, and we rejoice in those. There are these joys that we share. We also know that there are concerns that um, there has been another outbreak of violence in different parts of the country. We pray for those who have been victims of that violence, um, those who have been injured, and those whose spirits have been injured by this. We also pray for those who've perpetrated that violence. We know that there is still a war going on, and we pray for all of those involved in that at this time. We also recognize that there are many different health issues that folks within the congregation and family and friends are dealing with these days, and we pray for that healing touch that the great physician can provide in ways that we don't even begin to understand and for the, the peace and the comfort, both of the person who's dealing with that illness and the family and friends who are standing vigil at that time. There are many prayers that we bring. And as Tim plays, I invite you to release those prayers into the Lord's care, for it is God's touch that gives us that hope for the future for the present, for always. Let us be in prayer together. Gracious God, we come to you this morning in the brilliance of this sunshine, giving thanks for the love of your sun that shines on us moment by moment, day by day. We give you thanks for this gift of your presence through that power of his Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit that lifts and sustains and guides and encourages us. Oh Lord, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift, and today it's such a joy to celebrate birthdays and graduations and opportunities and new beginnings. And Lord, we rejoice that you dance with us, you lead us in that dance of, of joy and life and opportunities. And Lord, you are the one who holds us close in that dance when we're not sure what the next step should be. 
when we are stumbling and trying to figure out where to go and how to be, you are the one who is holding us close and giving us guidance. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear the rhythm that you set for our lives. We humbly ask you in Jesus' name, help us to follow in your steps for that is the very best place for us to be held. And Lord, when we are struggling in the grips of fear or sadness, that's when you hold us the closest. And when you give us that, that assurance that you are near, that you are there guiding those tiny steps that sometimes that's all we can take. Help us to follow your lead, to rest in your care, knowing that you are sustaining and holding us in that comfort, in that strength that only you can provide. For you are the giver to the Prince of Peace of everything that we need. Oh Lord, this day, we surrender our prayers into your care, knowing that in your time and in your way, you touch each and every one into fulfillment, into a newness of life. Lord, we offer ourselves to you as you have given yourself to us. In Jesus, our Lord and Savior in whose name we pray. Amen. The scripture today is from Psalms 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven. Praise God on the heights. Praise God, all of you who are his messengers. Praise God, all of you who come comprise his heavenly forces, sun and moon, praise God. All of you bright stars, praise God. Your highest heaven, praise God. Do the same, you waters that are above the sky. Let all of these praise the Lord's name, because God gave the command and they were created. God set them in place always and forever. God made a law that will not be broken. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters in all you ocean depths. Do the same, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy winds that does what God says. Do the same, you mountains, every single hill, fruit trees and every single cedar. Do the same, you animals, wild or tame. You creates that creatures that creep along and you birds that fly. Do the same, you kings of the earth and every single person. You princes and every single ruler on earth, do the same. You young men, young women too. You who are old together with you who are young. Let all of these praise the Lord's name because only God's name is high over all. Only God's majesty is over earth and heaven. God raised the strength of his people, the praise of all his faithful ones, that the Israelites, the people who are close to him, praise the Lord. Would you all stand for the gospel? Gospel is John 13, 31 through 35. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the Son of Man in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I'm with you for a little while longer. You will look for me. But just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, when I'm gone, you can't come. I give you a new commandment, love each other, just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God.
be seated. But I invite you to continue in that attitude of prayer with me. <coughs> A wondrous God of all creation, open anew these words of scripture we just heard read today and help us hear with fresh ears and welcoming hearts the life-changing message you have for us. This we pray in your son's name. Amen. An article I read this last week began by asking, if you knew you were about to die, what would you tell the people you love? What hope or dream or last piece of advice would you shape? Kind of set me back there. Those questions, though, swept me back to just a few months before I came here to my dad's bedside on what would be our last night together. I recall asking him if he was leaving me, and he responded with one of the biggest grins I had seen out of him in a long time, and he said, yep, I think I am. And he was just smiling, huge. And I told him I loved him, and grasping his hand, and he was grasping mine, <coughs> he said, got something important to tell you. So I leaned in and asked him, okay, Daddy, what, what is it? And with another smile, he said, don't remember. <laughs> Before closing his eyes, well, I remember, I remember that moment. I remember looking across at James, both of us we were standing on either side of his bed, both of us puzzled and, and sad at what was happening, but telling him it's okay. He had been struggling in hospice care for a long time. It was, it was okay. But I got another head shake, <laughs> like, okay, he heard me, it's okay, and another grin before he lapsed into the blessing of those gentle hours transitioning from this world into eternal rest. Daddy wasn't able to give voice to that something important. I'm going to ask him someday what it was. He wasn't able, not that it'll matter to either one of us at that point, but he wasn't able to give voice to that, but Jesus did. He did give voice to that something important on what would be his last night with his disciples. Offering not a parable or some pithy saying, but a dream in one piece of advice, telling them, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. I wonder if they too looked puzzledly at each other since there wasn't anything new about this commandment. God had given that command to love one another. He had given that to Moses for the Israelites during their wilderness wandering years recorded in the law from Leviticus where it says you must not take revenge nor hold a grudge against any of your people instead you must love your neighbor as yourself and then Jesus reminded the people of this about 600 year old law early 1,600-year-old law, rather, in his teaching as part of what we call his Sermon on the Mount. When he told them, you have heard that it was said, you must love your neighbor, and he added, and hate your enemies. However, 
he turned that on its head when he said, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who harass you so that you will be acting as children of your Father who is in heaven, you know, the one who loves all of creation. That all of creation we just heard who celebrates and loves God. And then, and then when tested by the Pharisees about the greatest commandment of the law, Jesus' response lifted up the Shema prayer from Deuteronomy, said every day by the faithful, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your <clears throat> soul, and with all your strength, and added, and the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. So there was nothing <clears throat> new about this command Jesus gave, and yet, and yet in distilling his life's work and teaching, you might say the, the essence of Christianity into one dream for his disciples to continue, Jesus' command is simple. Love one another. Can everybody go, ah, oh, yes. Three little words. According to one New Testament scholar, simple enough for a toddler to memorize. Did most of y'all remember that? Memorize that long, long ago? Simple enough for a toddler to memorize, yet challenging enough that even the most mature believers are repeatedly embarrassed at how poorly they comprehend and put this command into practice. Ouch. Those are hard words to hear. And yet, all too true. Love. Whether we're talking about romantic love, you remember the Greeks had four words for love, that romantic love, that eros love, or whether we're talking about the love shared between family, the storge love, or between friends, the phileo love, or even that love like God loves, agape love, all those types of love given their own word, all, all take effort, time, discipline, transformation for love of any kind makes us vulnerable, requires trust, spills over margins and boundaries, and we all feel safer not just being out there in the open quite so much. I mean, look where I'm standing here, behind this pulpit. Yes, it's for projection, but, you know, there's some sense of security there. But, but Jesus' dying wish isn't a suggestion. It's not, hey, it would be really nice if y'all would love one another. Want to try that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not what he said. It's a command. It's a commandment. Love one another. It's not an option for when and with whom you feel like loving, but a gift of obedience that we get to give to the one we call Lord and Savior of our lives. Yet to this day, we struggle to love one another. As we, as we see nightly in the news, or daily on social media, or through our own biases and boundaries. So it's a good thing Jesus clarified this command with a road map. Some guidance to help us. A GPS, if you want to put it in, in today's language. 
a guidance to help us continuing just as I have loved you. So you also must love each other. I bet your minds, like those of the first disciples, are, are right now flipping through all the stories you can recall about Jesus' interactions with people, with the 12 he called so long ago, and with you, just as Jesus has loved you, you also are to love. Okay, Lord. How was that? How does that go? Hmm, let me think about that. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is that Jesus loved selflessly. His whole life was not about him. It was about seeing the divine spark, that, that image of God, the Imago Dei, in everyone. And by respecting each person, whether young or old, Gentile or Jew, laborer or leader, man, woman or child, each Jesus saw and loved. There weren't a whole lot of boundaries around Jesus' love. He was good at looking across and encompassing everyone as a brother or sister of creation by respecting their humanity. No matter what their station or status in life, an awareness he demonstrated in washing his disciples' feet that last night together, including those who would betray or fail him. Jesus saw that spark of God, that relationship, respecting the humanity of everyone, whether they agreed or not. Jesus loved. The master teacher served all, leveling the world's efforts at dividing people into classes, the haves and the have-nots, the clean and the unclean, the appropriately to us dressed and acting and speaking or not. Jesus respect and compassion for others showed us a love that builds bridges between peoples and makes connections that lift up and empower us all. You see somebody struggling? Jesus said, well, help them up. You see someone who stumbled? Well, help them up. You see someone who's being flooded? Well, help them up. This empowers us all. Yes, an expression of, of Jesus' compassionate love was feeding people by the thousands, if you remember correctly, which I have to say we do pretty well also around here, and by healing people. And so might we even those of us who are not medically gifted, that's not particularly one of mine, but we can provide that healing by encouraging another through difficult times, by simply sharing smiles and greetings, by sacrificing that precious gift of our time, listening to others. These are all healing touches to spirits, to souls, to that humanity that we share. Showing respect, compassion, encouragement, and listening are all ways that Jesus loved others and are ways that we can love as he loved that have the potential to move us 
into that servant-hearted, bridge-building, beloved child of God image, sharing that bounty with others that Jesus envisioned for us by his new commandment for fulfilling this command to love as Jesus loved, he promised, is how everyone will know that you are my disciples. You love like I love. Everyone will know that you are Jesus' disciple. A privilege and a weight all of us claim, all of us bear, we who claim Jesus as our Savior, individually and, yes, also together as church. Our actions and attitudes reflect his love when we do what he did when we weep with those who weep and laugh with those who laugh, when we feed the hungry and see the world's invisible, when we welcome the least and release the, the captive from whatever is holding them, when we forgive the sinner, when we wash each other's feet and hold each other close, when we tell each other the truth and confront the oppressor and comfort the oppressed, when we guide one another home. We'll probably never have the opportunity a man did in Ukraine to share so many compassionate, generous elements of Jesus' love revealed recently with a picture of this car and a text from another man who wrote, I came out of the bomb shelter and saw a car near the store. I looked and saw that the keys were inside. I watched the car for two hours, waited for the owner. No one showed up. So I took my family, got in the car, and drove to Venezia, where my relatives live. Then I found the phone number in the glove compartment and called the owner. I'm sorry, I stole your car. I was saving my family. The response from the car's owner was not what he could have ever expected. Thank God! Thank God! Don't worry! I have four cars. I took my family out in my SUV, refueled my other cars, and left them in different places with the keys in and a phone number in the glove compartment. From all the cars, I've now received a call back. Once there's peace, I hope we'll see each other. Stay safe. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus still tells this to his disciples. Resolving to love as Jesus loved is that something important we can't wait to do until our last moments on earth to share. For reflecting Jesus' love in all we say and do with one another in our homes, schools, churches, places we work or volunteer from here in Irving to war-torn Ukraine and beyond is how everyone will know the transforming power of his resurrection and the new life Jesus offers so, so generously. 
and is how we'll guide one another home to the creator of all love. This is God's gift to us through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. I love you. Amen. Jesus is always reaching out, inviting us to receive that gift of love so that we can continue sharing it. If this is the day that you are hearing that voice inviting you into a new or renewed relationship with Jesus the Christ, and as we stand and sing our hymn of invitation, I invite you to come and share that desire to become a member of this church, to rededicate yourself, yourself, to dedicate yourself to Christ. If those of you watching online would like to have an opportunity to visit and to talk and to pray, uh, we would, I would be more than happy <laughs> to, to be in touch with you. Just send me a message and we will we'll be together. The Lord will make that possible. As you stand together, I invite you to surrender yourself, either where you are, or come and talk to me, to the one who loves us. praise you. We have come to honor you. We've come to thank you for all you have done for us and all you give us. Bless us as we bless you. Accept our gifts and talents as you have given us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Be seated. We come to the time in our worship where we get to take our place as family of God together at the Lord's table, wherever that table may be spread, whether it's at home with the elements that you've provided or here in the sanctuary. It is the table of the Lord where all are welcome, where all are invited to share in this feast recognizing that it is God's love 
that feeds us through this bread and through this cup. We come celebrating that love of God across time and place as Jesus and his disciples did on that last night that they shared as they gathered around the table in the upper room. As they came to give thanks to God and the ancient tradition, saying the prayers and singing the hymns that they all knew so well. It was during the course of that meal that Jesus took its simple bread. And as the tradition prescribed, he blessed God and he broke the bread. As he gave it to those around him, he said, This is my body, which is given for all. As often as you eat this bread, remember me. In the same way that night as the cup and the meal known as the cup of redemption was poured out, Jesus took that cup and again he blessed God. He gave it to them saying, though this is my blood, poured out for you and for many in a new covenant for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink this cup, he said, remember me. And so we come, yes, to feast together, but to remember these gifts of God for all of the people of God. Let us pray. Oh God, we are so thankful that once again we can come and enjoy this very simple but very special meal. We ask at this moment that you would bless these elements, the fruit of the field and the fruit of the vine. To each one here who will receive and partake as we partake together, that we all might be spiritually nourished. And now hear us as we pray that prayer you taught when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We are going to sing our communion hymn, and at the end of that time, I will invite. After we sing, I will invite you to come, to come forward, and to uh, pick up a, a cup that holds the, the element of the bread, and in the center of each cup, that element is gluten free, uh, and a cup of the juice. And then take those back and be seated again. And as soon as everyone is served, then we will share together. This is our time before the Lord.
body of Christ given for us all. And the blood of Christ. It is such a joy that we share together at the Lord's table share this feast and then get to go out and reflect this life and this love with everyone we meet. And so disciples, I invite you to stand and be prepared to go out and be as generous in your love as God and Jesus Christ has been to us. Go and share. Amen. Across the hall. 